uh, we are pleased to introduce you the second, the third uh, of two webinars of the project, Sustainable Civil Society Dialogue for Sustainable Development, implemented by Kyoto Club uh, and uh, the Energy Environmental Association of Izmir. And uh, we have today the uh, of the first group of webinars, the fourth module dedicated to smart cities and urban strategies. Welcome and thank you, Roberto, for giving us the floor. As you introduce, uh, I'm Piero Pelizzaro, and with me there is Roberto Nocerino. We, I'm the Chief President's Officer of the City of Milan, and Roberto will introduce you some later on, but he's the Project Manager of Sharing Cities. And today we would like to present you uh, uh, the approach of Milan. We, we, we love to take uh, a, a use case studies to showcase what is the smart sustainable development and planning in the city. So, uh, first of all, I will uh, the agenda of this 40 minutes presentation, 20 by me and 20 by Roberto. Uh, I, will be, I will start initially from which is the situation of the cities, which is the background of the cities and the impacts of climate change in the cities. And, and so uh, the needs, and then I will move for uh, the urban planning tools that we have identified, and then we move uh, through uh, concrete actions that the city has adopted and taken, uh, thanks to European funding project uh, Sharing Cities, uh, looking at uh, smart and sustainable mobility, and smart and sustainable energy efficiency building, and uh, renewable energy exploitation. So let me start. The city of Milan is facing a, a big uh, change uh, factor um, in terms of uh, climate change. And, um, first of all, since we have arrived, we have developed uh, a local uh, climate profile uh, in the city. And the local climate profile was developed through to identify the local impact of climate change on the urban scale. We know that at the global scale, the temperature has already rise from 1.2 to 1.4. Uh, to this uh, elaboration we've done uh, with the local institution, we have discovered that the city of Milan since 1901 until 2017 have faced an increase of the temperature of plus two degrees. And if now it's already plus two degrees, is since now until 2050, we are expecting a more two degrees of increase of the temperature. So that is meaning that since 1901 until 2050, the city of Milan will face an increase of 4% of the temperature, uh, 4, percent, um, 4 degrees of the temperature. More, yeah. Uh, on the other hand, the city has also have seen a dramatic increase of tropical nights. Tropical night is meaning when you sleep with more 21 degrees. And uh, due to the, um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, when you sleep with more than 21 degrees, uh, you have to be effective, uh, especially in terms of stress, even in terms of cholesterol, in terms of uh, good sleepiness, and, and so is in terms of health. So since the 1901 until now, we have seen plus 35 tropical nights, so we reach 50 tropical nights every year. That it could be fine if you live in the sea, it would be fine if you uh, get use of that. So I would pick more the Middle East country or um, uh, the, yeah, say, uh, the southern country. But when you live in a city as Milan, uh, this is, could be a massive effect on health of the, of the population. So have you seen the temperature anomaly? Have seen uh, the confirmation that the climate change is made uh, by human action? Is also because we have seen how the temperature increase uh, the anomaly, especially over the last uh, 20 years. So that is significant increasing. Uh, just to remember that 2019 was the hottest uh, years on track in Europe, not on the global scale, but in Europe. And in 2019, we have reached the, the highest temperature ever in the cities with plus 43. Uh, also, the temperatures perceived by the population is almost 49, 50. It would be fine or good for someone of the, coming from the Middle East, but it's not for me. On the other end, the city is something, something different. While we are mentioning plus 12,000 uh, over 80, uh, 50 in 2030, because at the same time, the city of Milan has, at the moment, 
uh, at, um, a population of 1.4 million inhabitants. Uh, and but the city is increasing on plus 50,000 population uh, inhabitants every year. So we are expecting to have more than half million population more, so reaching almost 1.9 million in 2030. Within this population increasing, we also see an increased number of elderly people. So it's meaning that there is a higher um, mm -hmm. um, higher part of the population will be exposed because we know that the vulnerable population are especially elderly people and, and youngsters. Uh, especially the elderly, uh, it's even not over 65, it's reaching over 85, and it seems that it, this is, will become a huge impact for the health of, of, our, of our community. Uh, so what we have done, uh, in the new master plan of the city that will be adopted and published uh, hopefully next week, we have identified uh, different pillars. One of the pillars is how we can create a green, sustainable and resilient city. Uh, how we will work on this. So the city of Milan is basically 74% uh, of the soil is covered by concrete, by roads, by housing. So the new goals of the city before 2020 is to bring nature back to the cities. So from 74, we're going back to 70%, to 70%. So we're going to reduce the soil consumption to 4%. How develop a new green space? Uh, so that's the, the main goals that we are reaching. Um, this minus 4% it will be reached in a time when the population is growing. So it puts us in a big challenge in terms of building retrofit in urban regeneration process and in getting space out for green. There is one big opportunity for us is to take out cars from cities. Because if you want more green, if you want more trees, you need less cars. Why? Because cars are not only a reason of emission, it's also a reason of heating up of the city. Uh, on the other end is the map of how the city is, um, uh, maybe there is a little delay because I'm already seeing my new slides that is not changing. Um, yes, here we go. Sorry, uh, we also double check. This is the impermeability of the city. As you can see, uh, almost all the city is not only covered by concrete, it's also really impermeable. This is, uh, the city is also facing some, another uh, huge impact due to climate change, economic or crisis as well is one of the reasons. Which is, uh, compared to the other city, the city of Milan is not suffering a lack of water. We are not suffering from droughts. The city of Milan has too much water uh, for many free reasons. One is that since 28, in the northern part of the city, a lot of industry were closed up due to the economic crisis. That industry was mainly industry that was water intensive. So the groundwater is increasing, so it's coming up. From the top, we have the same amount of rain, but in less, in less day. So that's meaning that we have what we call extreme weather events, or well, as in water, um, extreme rain uh, days. So we have more water from the top, more water from, from the bottom, and a lot of concrete. That means create a huge impact for cities, and we need to make the city more permeable. Uh, thanks to the Polytechnic of Milan, we also have the design and develop what we call the heat island um, uh, maps of the city. So we are also identify where is the most highest temperature are located within the city administration. So it's not only how the temperature is increasing, but also where the temperature is much higher than the others. That is quite impressive in terms of. Uh, we have, uh, we reach, we can just say that uh, the Duomo is the main square of the city, or in July it could reach uh, 42, 43. If you go out, but at least three and a half kilometers from the city, from the city center, we can go down to 35, 36. So it's meaning that there is a difference of seven degrees before the city center and the peripheries. And this is another challenge because we need to support peripheries before the peri-urban areas in terms of social support, but at the same time, the highest and the hottest temperature will be faced in the city center. So it's where climate and social have to be uh, worked together and to find a good balance um, on this. Then we have the hydraulic risk uh, map. 
uh, as you can see from the from the map that is coming, I do believe. Uh, the Gallica risk is also located where basically there is a lot of the main infrastructures, the train station, airport, and the main interconnection road of uh, of, of the city. Um, so what is the big challenge is making room for the environment. And um, uh, sorry, sorry because what I'm presenting is there is a big delay with the slide. Here we go. Um, and making room for the environment is uh, looking where we can find uh, space for 20 new bikes. So since now to 2030, uh, the city council, the city administration has decided that we have we are going to develop 20 uh, new bikes. And we also are now uh, working uh, also thanks to the um, well, what the big challenge we will have so to host the Olympics game 2026 together with Cortina, Cortina da Pezza in Veneto region. Um, we also have uh, start working on the uh, requalification uh, regeneration of the uh, ancient rail yard, and we want to connect all the rail yards with what we call the green belt, a sort of green belt to be then creating uh, a green and a belt within the city of Milan. Um, one of the um, one of the other um, program we also are facing, we are looking, is the how we can uh, open up or reopen, as you prefer, uh, the canal. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been in Milan, but normally when you come to Milan, you don't see any kind of river. You also see a canal when you go to have an aperitivo in a visit, and you enjoy your wonderful time with the street. But within the, within the city of Milan, we have three main canals, and one of them is, you can see from the maps, come from the north to Martesana and go down to the Navili. It's 7.5 kilometers uh, of uh, a possible reopening of the canal. Uh, one of the construction sites we're hoping to open at the end of this year, which is the impact to uh, bring back to air to, to this, this river, is one, is reducing the kilometers of available road in the city, so it's 7.5 less kilometers. It's meaning that we can improve our slow mobility, so we can improve the connection and the walking uh, through the cities and also bike line. At the same time, we can start using boats as one of the public transport within the city. So we're learning from our colleagues in Venice, from Venice, for example. And on the other end, uh, bring back water to, to the sun, so the open air is also helping us to cooling down the city because water absorbing heating, that is uh, one of the main challenges for, for this. So as I said, um, we have 20 more bikes. Um, some of them is already start planning. Uh, just to remember that one of the other goals that the city has posed itself is an ambitious goal. We have now a, an urban forest program, is named Forestami with the Metropolitan Area, and we have the goal to plant 3 million trees before 2030 uh, in the metropolitan area of the city. What does it mean, 3 million trees? Just to save by budget, it's almost a billion euro investments uh, for 3 million trees just to give you also the economic investment that the city is taking on this. On, on, other, on the other side, uh, on, on the other hand, sorry, uh, we also have looked at the city from the top, because we always see the city from, from, the, from the bottom line. Uh, the city has potentially 12 million square meters of green roof or other use of roof. On uh, this 12 million of green rooms, we are part of uh, an international uh, program named Clever, together with the city of Hamburg and the city uh, of London. Uh, Clever program has the goal to promote the adoption of green rooms uh, over all the, uh, the possible building in the city. This will be help us to improve the energy efficiency, the performance, the energy performance of the building, but at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to reduce the temperature and also is to bring back abundant space to the social community. Since we in the 70s, in the 50s, in the 60s in Italy, in other words, you used to use the roof, have the place to have dinner, to stay together, to dry your clothes. And we also want to reduce that space has an opportunity to create a new social hub within the city. And it's also how we link environmental um, transition to social justice, for example. In terms of resilience, 
by well, the standard that we have adopted. So within the, 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 the new master plan, we have set, we have identified a set of rules, uh, especially the Article 10. And uh, in the Article 10, it become, we have seen that uh, in Lombardy region, where Milan is located, uh, the law is already uh, obliged all the new construction to be and the deep, so nearly zero building standard code, uh, standard building, uh, building standard for, it, for energy performance. Due to the fact that it is already mandatory, we have pushed the law to be higher than nearly zero building. So we are looking at the solar reflecting materials, we are looking at the circular materials within the building, we, but also we are now allowed to integrate green uh, areas, so to the pavement, to improve the interoperability, not only on the uh, on the horizontal, so on the land, but we also be integrated within the building. So it means that you can also develop green roof or green facade. Uh, we learn or we take inspiration from the Bosco Verticale, it's one of the main buildings we have present in the city. Bosco Verticale for some one, it could be something for each other. Uh, for the others, it's uh, one of the, was the first building uh, like that. And when you are the in a starter of a revolution, you always made some um, uh, a mistake because you don't you you learn and we learn how to better improve. And so we uh, we thanks Stefano Boeri Architetti uh, for studios for, for this because it helped us to also codify then what is the the green facade and the green group. Uh, I think I'm running out of my time. I still have a couple of, of moments uh, minutes. So uh, this is how we, we will figure. Uh, yeah, this is sorry, this is coming. So how we will figure uh, the integration of all different because uh, the mitigation and adaptation solution for us we are not focusing on our mitigation or adaptation. We need to have an integrated approach to the cities in terms of mobility, in terms of building, in terms of uh, social issues because has there. Our mayor, uh, Mr. Sala, asked to us, we want to work and we are working on environmental uh, justice, but we are well, environmental transition, but we also need to keep in mind the social justice. So for each euro that we are going to invest in environment, we also need to invest one euro on social uh, program and to improve the integration and the welcome of all the population from over the city. So, uh, this is an important step. So to do that, for example, and then I'm going to finish and I give the floor to, to Roberto. It's, uh, we have, uh, since two years ago, uh, we use local budget. So we have 23 million euro available uh, to retrofit each uh, private building. It's a news present from yesterday. Our mayors to the air quality crisis has declared that since 20, 2030, uh, all gasoline heating system will be forbidden in the city. So now, since now, uh, all the remaining buildings that are still using gasoline to heat their, uh, their building, uh, they are obliged to remove within 2023. Otherwise, we'll be starting to have uh, penalties and going to be uh, a big uh, sanction for this. So uh, our program is also, as you can see, we have 5% support if you change your boiler. 15% if you change your volume and to retrofit your uh, building. You reach 20% if you change uh, the green roof, the building, and, and, and the boiler. Uh, all these incentives could be then uh, added together with the other at the national level. So basically, Milan, if you want to retrofit your building, you can receive 80% of all your investment. Uh, in the six months uh, after uh, you have completed your retrofit. So we are not only using standard, we also give support to our community to move forward in this, that it's one of the biggest challenge for the city of Milan. So it's the environmental transition to create a more uh, livable and affordable city for all our community. So thank you very much. And I leave the floor to my colleagues, uh, Roberto Nocerino. Okay, Piero, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. I am Eugenio from Kyoto Club. Uh, okay, I think we can leave the word to, to, to Ron Roberto Nocerino now. Uh, I will give him the screen. Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Roberto Nocerino. I am the Sharing Cities Project Manager for the City of Milan. 
uh, I'm going to explain uh, something about the, the project. This is on Horizon 2020, one of the uh, biggest and, and most important projects uh, running uh, in this moment in Milan, uh, giving some uh, highlights in terms of uh, um, what is happening in Milan in, in the field of smart city. Uh, okay, now, no, no, let me switch it off. Um, so, Let's start if the presentation work. Okay, um, sharing cities project is uh, uh, within the cross-cutting unit of the municipality of Milan, the smart city unit, uh, that has the mission of uh, create a vision and identify the priority for Milano smart city. So uh, why we are talking about smart cities? We are talking about smart cities since that uh, the cities, the role of the cities is growing and growing uh, in, uh, in, uh, during these years. Uh, we know that uh, in uh, 2028, the number of people living in a urban area uh, overtake the number of people living in a rural area, even though it's, uh, it's not uh, always simple to define uh, what is a, a urban area, what is a rural area. But, uh, despite this, of course, the number of people living there is increasing. And uh, uh, already in uh, 2014, uh, the CO2 emission uh, related to people living in a, a urban area was the 70%. So, of course, the role of the city in uh, changing uh, the, uh, uh, the balance of our, of our planet is uh, increasing and growing. And of course, is also increasing the complexity of our cities. This is the map of the mega cities, uh, namely the cities with more than 10 million of people in 2030. And of course, you, we can see that even though most of them are uh, concentrated in Asia, we know that also in uh, our uh, in Europe there will be uh, a lot of the city uh, growing in magnitude, and of course uh, uh, also uh, having a, s a connection with all the environment. We can we 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 know that uh, uh, for example Netherlands is almost uh, uh, even though there are a lot of different cities, but it's, we can consider it like a, a big uh, mega cities. Anyway, uh, the increase of complexity, of course, needs uh, that uh, uh, cities has to find tools for, uh, uh, for analy analyzing and uh, detecting uh, uh, the dynamics of the city. And that's why uh, we uh, started, uh, as the city of Milan, uh, the journey towards the smart city. We started it in 2012. Uh, we uh, published the guidelines for uh, Lanchi's Milan Smart City project. Uh, we had a long consultation in, uh, with the stakeholders, mapping uh, so-called smart stakeholders. And uh, in 2014, we approved the smart city guidelines uh, made by the, the city council. Uh, during this, uh, these years, uh, we, are, we reached uh, uh, very good results in the field of smart cities. Uh, at least in Italy. We are uh, the first smart city uh, in, uh, in Italy uh, and uh, one of the fields we are <laughs> performing the most is the sustainable mobility. Instead, as Piero uh, explained uh, before, we a lot of work has been done for uh, the environmental policies and that's why uh, we have a trans environmental transition department that is working <clears throat> on the fields that Piero explained just, uh, just before. Uh, so we are uh, at the top of uh, smart city rate uh, in Italy, but of course uh, a lot of work uh, has to be done uh, and that's why uh, we are working a lot on uh, European projects on anyway in, on innovation project, uh, projects. I'm gonna say some words about uh, sharing cities, but of course there are a lot of other projects like the Clever that's uh, again Piero mentioned before. Um, there are a lot of projects that are running this moment in Milan because Milan identified uh, uh, innovation project as a way for testing innovative solution for trial, for fail, for identifying uh, which are the best solution uh, to be uh, possibly to be applied just in a part of the city in some districts in order to scale up those that are uh, most effective. 
So some, saying something about sharing cities, it's a, a, a Horizon 2020 project, it's a smart cities and communities call. It's starting at the beginning of 2016 and will, be, uh, and will last till the end of this year, 2020. Uh, the, the overall budget for uh, all the partners involved is 24 million, and it involves uh, uh, three cities uh, that are Milan, Lisbon, and London as uh, lighthouse cities, and the three other cities that are Bordeaux, Warsaw, and Burgas that you see in the map uh, lie as a, a follower city. <clears throat> the idea is to have uh, uh, cities uh, apply in implementing uh, testing solutions that are the lighthouse ones, so London, Milan, and Lisbon, and three cities uh, learning what we are doing in, this, uh, in these years in order to uh, scale and replicate uh, uh, effective solutions that are Bordeaux, Warsaw, and Burgas. <clears throat> in Milan, in particular, we have a quite wide partnership made of uh, 17 partners uh, among university, universities, research centers, utilities, utilities uh, agencies of the uh, public administration, the public administration itself, of course, uh, uh, companies, uh, SMEs, so quite a wide panel of different uh, uh, partners that are crucial aspects for implementing uh, projects related to smart cities since that uh, a lot of competencies a lot of uh, um, a lot of effort but also a lot of different approaches has to be uh, has to be adopted for tackle the smart city uh, challenge uh, sharing cities uh, decided to be focused on so-called demonstration areas. So each of the three cities, the three lighthouse cities, selected a, a district where to test uh, in of the solution. For London, it was the, the borough of Greenwich. For Lisbon, uh, as we chosen the downtown. And for Milan, we decided to be focused on uh, so-called Porta Romana Betabia district. We chose this district for some uh, uh, for its peculiarities because it is a district uh, uh, where there are a lot of uh, opportunities for urban development. Since there were former industries, it's a former industrial district. There are some uh, problems, issues in terms of people living there that needs to to, to have. Uh, new services for being better connected to the city center even though the city center is just three kilometers far out from this uh, from this uh, from this area and also because there is a, a very big agriculture uh, area inside this district uh, the so-called uh, parco agricolo sud so the south agriculture park let me say so we choose this area and a lot of other projects are running in this area since that is a very <coughs> strategic area where to test uh, these innovative solutions. Uh, the approach adopted by Sharing Cities is based on three pillars that are place, people, and platform. From the very beginning of the project, we identified that uh, smart city cannot be just infrastructure and digital solution. Uh, so we can not just uh, install a new bike sharing uh, station and uh, say that we have a smart city. It's not like that. Uh, we uh, had in mind that, and it's also not just a question of uh, 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 data, so it's not just a digital uh, city that we want to, to pursue, uh, pursue it, but so we had to have in mind that people has to be in the center of our action. So we uh, we decide to have these uh, three pillars, face people and platform, where people, uh, the role of people was to co-design some of the measure, I will explain later on, and to be engaged for uh, uh, in the in the fields of uh, in the journey of behavioral change that is one of the most challenging uh, uh, most challenging action that a city has should be should uh, uh, should try to tackle uh, so just uh, some example of what we have done in uh, milan and uh, uh, just a premise uh, of course uh, this is a pilot project so numbers that i will show you are small but uh, uh, most of the action uh, will be scaled up or are already uh, object of scaling up, as I show you later on. Uh, so uh, what we, we were focused on, uh, in terms of physical implementation, we had uh, uh, some action that uh, you see summarized in this slide. We were focused on building retrofit, on sustainable energy management system, on sharing electric mobility, 
on smart lamppost interoperability platform and as i mentioned before uh, citizen co-design and uh, behavioral change you see some picture on in this slide but i, I will explain uh, each of the measure I, i've just mentioned um, so starting from the building retrofit uh, we had a, a goal of retrofitting five private buildings and one public building in the in the district uh, for a total amount of around 24 5,000 square meters uh, among uh, private and public buildings. Um, it was definitely a challenging, uh, uh, challenging goal. So what we decided to do uh, for uh, the public building was to identify uh, uh, social housing uh, owned by the municipality where to uh, apply innovative solution uh, for building retrofit in order to uh, scale them for other buildings in the, uh, owned by the municipality in the rest of the city. For the private ones instead, we launched a call at the beginning of the project in order to select those buildings that want to be involved in this process. We received 50, uh, we, we, we received 50 um, uh, buildings that want to apply to this call and we selected 20 of them. With these 20, we started a um, co-design process uh, made of three meetings. Uh, where we co-design with uh, people living uh, in uh, in each of the buildings, and you see some picture of the co-design that we set up. This co-design that we set up. Um, so with the, the people living in each building, we co-design with them which kind of solution they want to be to see uh, in their buildings. So, for example, photovoltaic panels, or uh, to uh, to insulate the facade, or to change the heat pump. Understanding from them which were the issues, the problems, the opportunities of each of the buildings. We had a, a seven, second meeting where we uh, build up with them uh, using a, a gamification approach. Uh, we design with them two options for each of the buildings. So one very challenging, another one a, a little bit. Uh, more realistic in terms of uh, building retrofit and a third uh, meeting with them where we uh, presented uh, uh, the results and the performances of each of the building for both energy, uh, uh, energy performances but also uh, economic uh, uh, and comfort performances. So uh, at the end of this project we ask to uh, each of the 20 buildings to vote in the general assembly of each building uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 approve or not uh, the the works on this building, and uh, we uh, arrived to have five buildings. That was the, our goals that approved the building rate of it. Here you see some of the some picture of before and after. Uh, all of the five private buildings have been already. Um, retrofitted so we are collecting data in terms of performances so what we are you are seeing is uh, uh, what is happening right now <clears throat> so for example for this building we have a uh, 55% of energy saving and uh, uh, we uh, gained uh, three energy class so for energy class F to energy class C with a lot of improvement in terms of uh, energy performances and this is another example you see uh, an ugly uh, building uh, on the left and a completely renewed and retrofitted uh, building on the on the right uh, with an energy saving of 52 percent for each of the building as i mentioned before we had to insulate the facade surely we had to put solar panels in order to produce energy at least for uh, uh, for uh, uh, the consumption of the of the common parts and uh, uh, we uh, Sometimes we also work on each system, so depending on 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 the building. Here, instead, there is the, uh, just a, a, a picture that uh, depicts the um, uh, social housing uh, building. The works for this building are still running for uh, two reasons. One is the, that the the measure in this building were definitely um, more complicated and. Uh, uh, most more challenging than the ones for the private buildings and also because of public procurement process that we we had to uh, try to rearrange not to rearrange but to face uh, uh, trying to 
fit them uh, in, a, in a European project with a very short time window for being applied. But anyway, works are running. We are at 50% of, uh, of the works. And so, uh, of course, this will be a test bed for testing solution uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the, the renew, renovation of new of uh, other social housing in Milan. Uh, changing uh, uh, changing a measure in terms of uh, uh, um, sharing and electric mobility, we worked in uh, the district uh, with a comprehensive uh, uh, approach, uh, trying to uh, work in synergy with uh, the strategies of the municipality of Milan included uh, into the uh, sustainable urban mobility plan. So we worked a lot on shared and electric mobility, installing 14 a new bike sharing station in a peripheral area that was definitely something that uh, uh, is not common in uh, in Milan but also in other cities so we put the 14 uh, new bike sharing station and we put on the road 150 new e-bikes uh, with uh, uh, electric e-bikes electric bike with uh, uh, child seat so uh, letting also people that have to bring kids uh, on the bike to use the bike sharing uh, in uh, in this way we are uh, we have increased the fleet of the bike sharing system that is uh, running in Milan uh, uh, in the last 10 10 year that is the bike the second action related to mobility is the test of smart smart parking uh, technologies. So we installed 175 uh, sensor for smart parking, using them for uh, uh, load and un unload parking slots for uh, disabled people parking lots for uh, and also for uh, uh, for uh, uh, the charging points uh, uh, for so for. Uh, area dedicated to electric mobility as I explained later on but I just wanted to, to give you some uh, info uh, of uh, the picture that you see on the right there is a, a set, uh, there are, we installed also like 10 sensor for uh, monitoring a bus stop uh, in order to detect illegal parking on this bus stop in order to uh, to see uh, how many times and for how long park, uh, cars are parked illegally, not allowing bus to, uh, to let people to in, come inside the bus in the proper way. So we are using also technology in a kind of disruptive way, not for uh, uh, saying to, be, to, to, to users where a parking is free, but for saying to the, the police uh, where is a legal parking uh, that create a disruption of the public service. Uh, we also create uh, a logistics service, as I say before, numbers are small, so nine, just nine events and two e-cargo bikes, you see the picture on the right, dedicated to a mass retail uh, market that uh, uh, allowed to have home delivery of this mass retail market, completely zero emission in the district area. But what we are collecting in terms of data is that there is no uh, no decrease of KPIs for uh, uh, the adoption of these e-vehicles. So we are monitoring all of these uh, uh, all, all the, the deliveries, and we are in contact with the operators that are performing these deliveries. And there is no uh, decrease of KPI. It's very important uh, since that we know that the logistics has a huge impact in our cities in terms of both traffic, uh, illegal parking, and of course emissions. So to, uh, to work and to be sure that uh, we can ensure the same performances with electric vans is definitely something very interesting. Uh, the, uh, another measure related to uh, electric mobility was the test of uh, uh, car sharing service uh, dedicated to a community. Uh, it's not this is one of the measures that is not running very well and so we are trying to reshape a little bit uh, this measure and exactly today I have a meeting with uh, with our uh, agency that is AMAT for the environment and the tra tra mobility and territory in order to uh, try to uh, find another solution for creating uh, for testing for uh, uh, detecting the performances of community car sharing that we think is definitely something that could uh, uh, be very interesting, as, ex especially for some uh, communities like uh, students' community of people that uh, arrive from other cities that uh, are working in Milan, but maybe they don't need a car 
for uh, 24 or 7 but maybe for some some specific uh, uh, some specific trips during the, the week anyway today we will have this meeting for trying to rearrange uh, this uh, this measure and finally uh, related to the mobility uh, we uh, uh, installed uh, 10 mobility areas with uh, 60 uh, charging points uh, in in the city and this is uh, within a uh, uh, wider strategy of the municipality of Milan of creating these uh, mobility areas uh, there will be uh, 43 in the entire city that will help car sharing operators in uh, that want to shift from um, traditional uh, vehicles to electric ones in uh, better uh, managing their fleets uh, using these mobility areas as apps where to park and recharge their their cars so again these uh, uh, small numbers but within a wider strategy finally in terms of physical implementation we had uh, to, we tested uh, uh, environmental sensor and traffic sensor installed on uh, lampos so we use the lampos as enabling infrastructure for uh, for uh, uh, smart sensors and again this is something very interesting in uh, uh, in order to to work in synergy with the official environmental monitoring network uh, that is uh, managed by our regional authority so uh, we are working with them in order to understand uh, the uh, how these data are accurate in order to understand if this data can be pervasive can be can help in creating a more uh, a, a more detailed network of environmental sensor uh, i'm going to to conclude my presentation just to say that i mentioned before the citizen engagement uh, i have explained how we uh, an example of how we co-design with citizens uh, some of the measure like the building ones uh, we also created a uh, uh, an app uh, that is an ecosystem that is called share me where citizens can share their uh, good uh, experience in the field of sustainability, mobility, waste, uh, energy saving, whatever, gardening or whatever. Um, the idea is that uh, people trying to, people sharing experience, so the peer-to-peer -peer contamination, uh, sometimes is uh, most more effective than the top-down approach. Uh, of uh, like a communication campaign saying that you have to take the bike. Uh, Greta, Greta Thunberg uh, is a, definitely a very good example of how uh, people like us uh, are able to influence uh, uh, citizen behavior more than a lot of politicians saying that we have not to use the not to use the bike, uh, that not to use the car, but to use the bike in our daily life. So this is a way that we try to uh, to, you know, to to work with for uh, um, this uh, behavioral change uh, uh, journey. Um, okay, I'm going to conclude. Uh, oh, sorry, just one other thing. Uh, of course. Uh, all the measures that we, I uh, I show you uh, are creating data. So what we create, what we set up from the beginning is the so-called human sharing platform that is now the interoperability, interoperability platform of the municipality of Milan that is able to uh, collect, gather data uh, in real time, mostly uh, on an API approach. Uh, in order to detect this data, collect this data, and create added value information for helping the municipality in understanding the dynamics of the city. Just to make an example, with a collaboration of another European project uh, that is Synchronicity in Milan, we use the bike sharing uh, data in terms uh, of GPS data for uh, creating the, uh, the the trips and the journeys and to understand where the bikes, where the users are using bikes in, in on which roads, on which in which way uh, in our city, in order to better understand if our planning of cycle path are uh, adherent to the, the to, to the habits of the of the user. So of course, data, uh, as we know. Uh, have a great potentialities about the, 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 the tricky the tricky thing is how to use this data and we are also trying to explore this uh, this issue 
So finally, the last, uh, last two slides, just to say, as I already mentioned, that uh, uh, what we are doing in sharing cities, that this is the column on the left, are small numbers, but uh, are uh, in a more uh, in, a, in a wider framework of intervention, that is the column on the right. Uh, of course, not uh, uh, we are uh, not the smart city units, but within other departments like the mobility environment, uh, energy departments. Uh, just to just to say, and now I just uh, uh, say a few words about. Uh, the call for building retrofit that also Piero mentioned before. Uh, as I explained, we retrofitted five private buildings, of course, small numbers, but the, this call that has been launched by the municipality of Milan with 20 million of euro of call will potentially allow to retrofit more than 300 buildings. So these are the numbers of the call so far. So there is, uh, you see 22 million of euro of uh, uh, of uh, budget and uh, in this moment just 3 million of euro has been used by uh, by uh, by by citizens by buildings so 14% and we have already uh, saved of co2 of around 3 million of kilos per year and uh, we are uh, the, the equivalent of uh, uh, 252000 uh, trees of course, with the, the full uh, uh, development of, uh, uh, of, uh, of this call, uh, we will have 380 buildings in potentially uh, retrofitted uh, with a saving per year of 21 million of kilo uh, of CO2 uh, that are equivalent to 1.7 million of trees. So again, the potentialities of this call has not been um completely developed but of course in the next year we will work as a municipality in order to push uh buildings in retrofitting also because as mentioned as Piero mentioned before uh the gasoline uh, it power system are not uh, legal anymore so that's all from my side thank you for your time for your attention and uh, i leave the floor to uh, roberto back Thanks a lot, Roberto. I'm Eugenio from Kyoto Club as before. Um, I will leave now a few minutes to our participants to, if they have some questions, you can write them in the question window you find down right. Um, <clears throat> while waiting, I would like just to ask you if you can re re resume uh, the structure of Milan municipality. I don't know if you or Piero you can decide you can re resume how the milan municipality the structure of the milan municipality deals with the smart cities um, challenges let's say uh, you mentioned before that uh, the smart city unit works together with other directorates let's say directions other offices like the, the mobility one the environment one the energy i wanted to know just the resume of how you um, uh, coordinate with the other offices about that. Thanks. Is Piero speaking? Well, <clears throat> actually, it's a, it's a good question, but it's also a, a, an ongoing uh, process. Let me explain what, what I said. Um, since last July, uh, our mayor, Mr. Sala, has uh, decided uh, to take on his own all the competencies of the uh, environment and the climate change. So we have now created a, a new uh, department, is named Environmental Transition. Uh, in, in Environmental Transition, there are three main areas. One is climate and energy. The other one is urban resilience that I'm, I'm leading to. And the third one is uh, water and waste. Uh, within this, uh, on, on top of this, there will be still other three main areas that are uh, considered environmental areas or smart, let's say, but it's not part of the environmental transition. We can say that still we have uh, um, the, the food policy, we have a food unit, so it's taking care of all the food policy related to when we speak about food, it's not only get access to food, but it's also meaning how food is delivered, how food is produced how we can reduce food waste, how we can improve the circularity, and so on. And then on the other end, there's also the smart city. Since the beginning of the creation of the smart city unit was 12, uh, 2012, uh, uh, with the pub publication of the first guidance of smart cities, 
uh, for the city of Milan, smart cities, it's not meaning technology, it's meaning community, it's meaning economic development, it's meaning uh, creating uh, a good environment for startup and company or industrial manufacturing that could become smarter together with the city. So nowadays, the smart city unit is, is located within the economic development, the urban economy uh, department, because it's more related to how we could create uh, appropriate environments uh, within the city for companies to come, develop, and research, and then go to the market. Why? Because the economic, the, the urban economy department is also in charge of the relation with the university. In the city of Milan, we have uh, among public and private uh, 11 universities with more than 250,000 students that are resident in the city. So we try to link university uh, research and economic development uh, with the urban economy development. And then where, where is uh, Smart Cities is located? Smart Cities, it's, uh, it's, so it's, it's, it's more, more thing about smart communities. And how we work uh, with the other, how Roberto and myself, we work with the other, uh, the city has created um, uh, what we call intersectoral committee, uh, while the different departments are coordinating uh, for the master plan, or for the new living lab revolution, or all the others. So there is weekly meeting where different departments are uh, put together to update and coordinate in the future development. So it's, it's, it's a big challenge for all family when you work to, to work uh, over, to cross over silos. Uh, private companies say, oh, we don't have silence, uh, I come from the private company, and private has the same issue as the public authorities. We all work in silence, even among our families. Sometimes we don't know where wife is doing or what our husband is doing, and, and still silence is there. So uh, it's, it's a good coordination. I think what Roberto has just shown, it's uh, the exact good result of a good coordination among different departments, where mobility, environment, um, building, and facility management, and social program are working together because our main goals is not a technology, is our citizen and our community. Welcome back. Good morning, everybody. It's Eugenio again from Kyoto Club. Uh, welcome to our two speakers for this second part. Uh, Antonio Lumicisi from the Rome Municipality and Chiara Tavella from Space Consulting. Uh, I will open up the mic. And I will now uh, give the word to the first of them who is uh, going to speak, which I guess is Antonio. Okay, thank you. Thank you and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, um, my name is Antonio Mlumicisi and uh, I'm a climate and energy policy expert. I will uh, show just a few slides later uh, my background. Just to introduce my speech today, I will uh, talk about this, uh, those four uh, topics the EU climate policy, the role of local authorities, and the covenant of measures for climate and energy. It's the main topic I want to discuss with you all. And finally, to say something about uh, the Turkey, the country where all the participants are coming from. Uh, before starting, I would like to introduce a little bit myself. I am uh, as a scientific background, I'm a statistician and a demographer. And uh, I, am, uh, I have uh, some decades of experience of sustainable development. I worked mainly with public bodies at all levels, international levels, such as uh, FAO, at national level, uh, such as the Italian Ministry for Environment, for example. I worked in, for 15 years in the past. And also at the local level, I had a um, very interesting uh, experience at the municipality of Rome in particular. I had also some uh, experience as an uh, academic experience at the University of Viterbo as a professor of course, Forest and Sustainable Development. 
And in the last uh, 10 years, I have focused on the role of cities reducing their greenhouse gases and polluting emissions. That's why I'm here to discuss uh, with you all about the role of local authorities. Finally, I regularly publish some articles and posts in uh, my personal blog on Fatto Quotidiano Online, is um, one of the main national newspapers, and also in a web magazine called uh, Il Cambiamento. That's all about my um, myself, and uh, I'd like to start with uh, just briefly to recall what is the European Union climate policy. And uh, maybe it's well known that uh, the EU committed itself to uh, reduce uh, its uh, CO2 emission by 2020 by at least 20%. And now the new target for 2030 is to reduce uh, at least by 40%. This is a part of a long-term process to reach the, the so-called climate neutrality by 2050. This is part of the commitment the EU uh, took uh, by the, under the Paris Agreement and also uh, under the, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable uh, Development Goals, uh, the UN uh, framework. Um, as you maybe know, uh, the new president of the European Commission, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen, launched the, the European Green Deal that, uh, sorry, uh, Yes, uh, launched the European Green Deal that is a broad roadmap, a roadmap that uh, deals not only uh, the energy sector but also biodiversity, forests, agriculture, green seeds of course and circular economy in general and also is a, would be a very important platform to mobilize more than 100 million of uh, euro in the next uh, years. And one of the first um, action of the new commissioner or the new president of the Crimea Commission would be also to try to accelerate the process, the process because uh, to be climate neutral by 2050 means that maybe the target fixed for 2030, the reduction of at least 40%, is not enough. So she will present the new uh, package to uh, update this target to at least 50, 55 percent. This is very important because it will be a, a, a very important step forward the uh, important target of uh, climate neutrality by the mid of the century. Um, why the cities are so important or the networks of cities are more, so important? We have to recall that cities are those places where more than 50% of the world's population lives today mm -hmm. and also where 80% of uh, GDP is produced mm -hmm. and also where more than 75% of climate change gas emissions due to final energy consumption are emitted. That's why we say that, uh, in general, the battle to save our planet is won or lost in cities. In the right of uh, your screen, you can see some um, summary of what happens since uh, 2008 when the Covenant of Measures, the main uh, initiative at the European level, has been launched to, up to now. Uh, in 2008, it was the first launch of the Common of Mayors. Uh, in 2014, uh, a new initiative called Measures Adapt, more concentrated, more focused on adaptation instead of the Common and more focused on mitigation actions. But in 2015, the new Covenant of Measures for Climate and, um, uh, and uh, Energy uh and uh, has been uh, launched and uh, in uh, in this new uh, version of the covenant measure mitigation and adaptation are merged are uh, together 
Um, in 2017, a new uh, improvement uh, has been launched, the Global Covenant on Measure for uh, Climate uh, uh, and Energy. That means the European experience of the Covenant merged with the Compact of Mayors uh, experience coming from US. So the two big players from US and from Europe merged together in the so-called Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy. So this is a very important uh, step forward to uh, clearly show the, the way we have to, uh, to go. Um, now we we focus on uh, uh, my, oh, yes. Now we uh, focus on the EU initiative, the Covenant of Measures for Climate and Energy. It's uh, it brings together local and regional authorities voluntarily committed to implementing EU climate and energy objectives on their own territory. It is uh, a unique bottom-up movement shaped by cities for cities. A shared vision of decarbonized and resilient cities where citizens have access to secure, sustainable and affordable energy. It is a, a growing and inclusive community now counting almost 10,000 signatories representing over 300 million citizens. Signatories endorse a shared vision for uh, 2050, which is uh, first accelerating the decarbonization of their territories, second, threatening their capacity to adapt to unavoidable climate change impacts, and third, allowing the citizen to access secure, sustainable, and affordable energy. In particular, the signatory cities pledge action to support implementation of the EU 40% greenhouse gas reduction targets by 2030, and the adoption of a joint approach to tackling mitigation and adaptation to climate change. In order to translate their political commitment into practical measures and projects, Covenant signatories commit to submitting within two years, following the date of the local council decision, a Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan, SICAP, mm. outlining the key actions they plan to undertake. The plan will feature a baseline emission inventory to track emission, uh, mitigation actions and a climate risks and vulnerability assessment. The adaptation strategy can either be part of the CICAP or developed and mainstreamed in a separate planning document. This bold political commitment may marks the beginning of a long-term process with cities committed to reporting every two years on the implementation progress of the plans. And as you can see in the screen, at the moment, 64% uh, of signatories submitted uh, their own plan and uh, 36 of them also uh, a monitoring, uh, a monitoring uh, plan. So this is uh, just to summarize the situation uh, up to now. Um, the Covenant Mayors um, step by step. And in the first uh, graph, you can see the three main steps uh, the cities are uh, going to uh, afford. In the step one, of course, the formal signature of the Covenant on Measures for Climate and Energy. Uh, step two is the submission of the Sustainable Energy and Action Plan. And between step one and step two, the city defines its um, ambitions in order to select appropriate actions. The best in this step would be to involve local actors in example, associations, citizens, experts, and so on, since the beginning to define together with the local administration the ambitions and the actions to be included into uh, the Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan. 
Step three is the submission of the monitoring record. And between step two and step three, the city delivers practical actions and starts actions monitoring in order to have an um, ongoing review progress and readjust uh, priorities for the city because every two years maybe something is needed to be changed or modified in order to have uh, every two years an updated uh, action plan. According to uh, specific guidelines, uh, a list of concrete action are included into the CCAP, actions related to each of the mandatory sectors, the mandatory sectors such as the building sector, transport sector, and local energy production sector, but also to each of the so-called non-binding sectors that, are, that the city decides to include for its own reasons such as uh, small industry, for example, those industries not included in the emission trading scheme that is regulated at the European level. Municipal wastes, agriculture and forest, that are non-bank sector, but could be important for the term, uh, for some uh, cities. So it's a choice of the city to include or not in the, uh, in the plan. Um, in the right of your uh, screen, you can see that the signatories are not alone in this process. There are other actors that at different levels uh, can give some support to the signature uh, cities. We can see better maybe in the next uh, slide where uh, we see that uh, the covenant of measures for climate and energy includes uh, a multi-stakeholder involvement uh, from uh, a, an administrative, technical and promotional support from the uh, Covenant of Majors Office in Brussels to an institutional, uh, an institutional support from the European Commission, the European Parliament, the Committee of the Regions, as well as the European Economic and Social uh, Committee. Again, from uh, an implementation and networking support from the Covenant coordinators and supporters to a technological support from uh, dedicated EU initiatives like such as uh, ICT for sustainable growth and smart cities and communities. Again, from a scientific and uh, methodological support from the Joint Research Center, European Environment Agency, and academic and research community, to a uh, financial support from the European Structural Investment Funds, uh, the European funding programs like uh, Horizon 2020, LIFE, and so on, and finally also to awareness uh, raising, such as the European Sustainable Energy Week and the Energy Days. Uh, in the right side of your uh, the slide, you can see some achievements uh, to date of the signatory cities. Uh, they um, reached uh, uh, an average uh, reduction of uh, greenhouse gas emission of 23 percent. It's not so bad, and also. Uh, they uh, had a time uh, time for a share of renewable energy uh, and also a reduction in final energy consumption. And uh, finally, uh, it's very important, they triplicate their local renewable uh, energy production. Uh, all those numbers came from the analysis of the CCAPs, uh, or the action plans the cities have uh, uh, presented uh, up to now. Uh, okay, in, I already commented this uh, slide, uh, differentiate uh, the methodological materials that the Covenant Mayors and uh, its related so support uh, offices uh, provided to uh, provide to, 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 to the cities, to the senior cities, and then also all the documents and uh, um, uh, yes, documents, um, handbooks, uh, uh, also um, webinars, uh, uh, tools to support the signatory cities in uh, in, in this process uh, to uh, the uh, with their 
final object, the final target to uh, implement as best as they can uh, their own CCAP. Uh, finally, the last minute I want to dedicate to what is going on in, in uh, Turkey. I understood that the participants of this webinar are uh, people coming from uh, this country. So I can say that at the moment uh, we have uh, 22 uh, signatory, uh, signatories from uh, this country, from Turkey, and uh, there are also um, city of big cities, I mean, uh, with a uh, number of citizens quite important, over also a million uh, inhabitants. And uh, 12 of them already have uh, presented and approved the uh, Sustainable Energy and uh, Plan, a Sustainable Energy and Action Plan, or CCAPS, uh, the difference between CAPS and CCAPS is just because uh, CFC refer to the target of 2020 and CCAPS the target to 2030. So there is um, uh, an evidence that uh, some cities in Turkey are well uh, involved in this, uh, in this process. And more on that, on top of that, I can say that uh, uh, three uh, of those cities you can see in the final slides, uh, uh, have already uh, tabled the monitoring plans. That means that uh, those cities are well involved in the process. They are they are keep going the the the, the, the monitoring uh, analysis of the single action they included uh, into uh, the the sustainable energy and climate and, and action plan. And the target, uh, of course, you can see in the slide is um, around 20% because, of course, the, those actions are related to the target they fixed uh, for 2020. That means at least 20% by 2020. But uh, I can see, we can see that the first two cities, for example, already adopted the 2030 target. So in the next monitoring plans, uh, for sure, they will update also uh, the emission reduction uh, target. So that's, that's just to conclude, uh, I think TARC is a, a very interesting uh, uh, platform uh, to uh, see and to monitor what uh, the Covenant or Mayor is doing at the European, uh, at the European uh, level. I think that it's uh, that's all from my side. Uh, I think also my 20 minute uh, time is uh, over. So I will thank you for your attention. I'm here to listen also a potential question later on. Thanks a lot, An Antonio. Um, I don't see. Okay, well, maybe there is a question. No, just thanking you. Uh, so I will. Uh, I would say let's leave the stage to. Uh, to Chiara now, and I will uh, give her the screen and open up her microphone. Okay, so good morning, everybody. I'm Chiara Tavella. I'm an engineer from Best Consulting. And um, this morning, I would like to talk to you about the link uh, of the two measures initiatives uh, in Europe. So uh, the Covenant of Mayors, my colleague Antonio Lumicisi talk about, and uh, the smart cities, you have listened to uh, the experience from Milan. So the content here, a short introduction of our company, the sustainable goal at global level, the main pillars uh, in Europe, examples and lessons learned, and I've tried also to collect the materials that are available nowadays. So. Um, as I said, uh, I'm an engineer. I'm working in a, a small company. We are a consultancy company that are um, targeting um, public authorities, promoting experience exchange um, on the themes of sustainability and uh, uh, innovation. We have been very active at European level since the beginning. We are involved in many projects. And um, myself, I'm uh, now coordinating 
an H2020 project called CAMEZI, which is about the covenant of mayors. And uh, I'm also leading a work package in uh, the Smart City Replicate project. The work package uh, is cross-casting activities and it deals with the, the rollout plans of the three light houses in the project, which are San Sebastian, Bristol, and uh, Florence. But we have also a um, Turkish uh, city on board, Nilufa, as follower. So let's start with uh, the development goals. Besides the EU climate and sustainable targets about mitigation and adaptation, I would like to show you that there are the UN strategical goals that are global. They are 17. Uh, they have been set in 2015 by United Nations and the target is 2030. There are three goals that are linked to um, our activities, mainly the number seven, um, affordable and clean energy, number 11, sustainable cities and communities, and number 13, climate action. They are working closely together and they are linked with the, our initiatives. Why municipalities should take action on um, this issue? Because energy and climate transition requires uh, a local multi-level efficient policy. It must be um, driven at local level to involve all the stakeholders of the territory. The key role of uh, a local authority is, of course, um, policies and regulations at local level to uh, support the, the transformation of the market, but also stimulating a change in uh, behavior of its citizens, also giving uh, uh, good practices and a good example, and uh, mainly networking local stakeholders to exploit synergies and try to multiply the effects. Uh, municipalities uh, are trying uh, to take action, but uh, there are some obstacles in implementing those uh, policies and mainly uh, talking with the uh, municipal staff, uh, those obstacles are related to local capacity in terms of timing, but also in terms of skills, and access to financial resources. So uh, we thought that local authorities need support to participate in those uh, initiatives. And there are, as I will show you in the next slide, some tools and procedures that could be very helpful. Uh, the two initiatives uh, targeting uh, municipal users and with similar objectives in Europe are the Covenant of Mayors and uh, the Smart Cities and Communities um, program. One is, the second one is more or less the evolution of the other, and they are completely, um, let's say, complementary. Uh, what does SMART mean for you? Uh, I think that Piero Pellissaro uh, has already explained it to you, but um, let's uh, highlight it again. Um, the program uh, set by the EU wants to improve the quality of life of European citizens. It's not only about technology implementation, but the final target is quality of life. Of course, um, the main aim is to reach energy and climate targets all around Europe, but also to increase competitiveness of industries and uh, also uh, small and medium enterprises. And it's based on sharing knowledge and uh, replicating uh, success stories uh, all around Europe and also abroad. Participating cities in the programs uh, are expected to um, demonstrate the feasibility of going behind the uh, energy and climate objectives. So it's a very uh, ambitious uh, program for participating cities. 
there are two additional linked sub initiatives. Uh, the first one is European Innovation Partnership that um, has been uh, set to um, put together all the stakeholders that could support the program. So cities, industries, uh, business, investors, researchers, and there are also six uh, groups, working groups called action clusters, actually working on different topics. And there's also the Smart Cities Information System, which is um, a platform aiming at uh, know-how exchange. Um, on the right, uh, you can see uh, a screenshot uh, from the website of the Smart City Information System, and you can appreciate that there are already six examples from um, Turkey, six cities participating in projects. Uh, one of uh, the action cluster, the planning action cluster, has developed uh, a guidance package. Uh, I have contributed to the development of the guidance together with many technicians and um, stakeholders. It could be uh, implemented both for CCIP or for Smart City Plan because it's a kind of uh, roadmap, a procedure for integrated planning and um, also for, for the implementation. Uh, it gives hints about the smart vision definition, which is fundamental, and how to do a smart city plan based on co-production approach. It's not a unique solution, but it's a tested path. And, and so um, uh, there are also a lot of description of practical experiences of pilot cities. And then it's important, um, the paragraph about how to put the plan into effect, um, which is the main obstacle cities are facing now. So um, hints about implementation and uh, monitoring. Regarding monitoring, there are uh, best practices uh, reported, and uh, two of those best practices I would like to um, focus on are the ISO standards, and uh, um, the European Energy Awards. Uh, these are the two methodologies suggested to boost uh, monitoring, because as you saw uh, before, few CCAPs have been monitored at EU level, and to foster the implementation. The European Energy Award um, is known also with other names all around Europe, like for example, CTG in France, uh, IFEMS, in Austria and Paclima in uh, in Luxembourg, but it's the same methodology. Um, why uh, we would like to combine those two um, methodologies with our initiative, COM and Smart Cities, because there are strong similarities in the processes, as you can see from the two pictures. Both. Uh, the initiatives require a strong initial political commitment. They require specific organizational structure, with a, uh, which is the main step the municipalities and uh, anyone uh, working in uh, integrated policy should take. And uh, also, they try to promote long-term engagement because it takes time. Uh, to implement those plans, and those structures should last over years. They are following the same process structure, which is mainly a daming cycle, so plan, do, check, act, uh, as usual in the quality management systems. Um, let's talk about ISO standards. There are several ISO standards applicable uh, to our plans. Uh, the first three are quality management systems um, that could be used uh, by any kind of, of users, also companies and private sector, about quality, energy management, and environment. While the last point 
consists mainly in a set of uh, indicators specific for municipalities to measure performances, uh, compare municipalities and support um, decision makers. Uh, the standard does not provide a judgment. Um, the targets, concrete targets are set by municipalities according to the local situation. I reported also uh, the web portal for the ISO 37120 about sustainable cities and community, where you can find the practical examples of benchmarking and open data from um, participating cities. Regarding the Uni European Energy Award, which is widespread in Europe, you can see from the pictures, ordinary members are in dark blue and there are also some pilot countries in light blue. It has been um, uh, drafted uh, for municipalities by municipalities, like the Covenant of Mayors. Um, it supports to its process uh, through um, a lot of instruments available and also qualified advisors. It supports the planning and implementation of local action in all the relevant areas of competence of a public authority. So joining the program, you can have access to a comprehensive pool of uh, supporting tools that are tailored at um, national level, very country specific. And you can be coached by uh, external experts. It is uh, in use in 1,500 cities involving 60 million EU citizens. Uh, why do local authorities uh, choose to participate in those uh, programs, both ISO or European Energy Award? Mainly because awarding and certification processes create um, increased visibility. It's a strong argument for location marketing, for example, and uh, to show your green and smart pioneering role. Then because uh, the possibility of having international benchmark and international networking, uh, so um, catering experiences from um, similar realities and uh, compare uh, your performances. Uh, both the systems provide um, effective management procedures. So if a municipality doesn't know how to deal with uh, an integrated plan, uh, this procedure could support uh, the work. And then because they provide also regular training uh, for municipal staff, and as I said, a lot of uh, um, different tools, and you can see on the right some uh, results of these uh, tools. As I told you at the beginning, um, I'm uh, coordinating a project which is actually ongoing, it's called uh, CAMISI. Uh, the project aims at uh, synchronizing and aligning uh, all those initiatives, trying to facilitate municipalities in their work and facilitate multiple engagement. So starting from the covenant and going into the smart city world. We would like to increase the number of cities and communities engaged with the EU targets um, by producing effective, effective plans. Um, what we are doing now um, with uh, 18 selected ambassadors municipality, we are testing tools that will be provided later on on an open platform available for, for anyone. On the left, you have uh, the list of uh, the new tools and we will have also training materials and uh, a lot of uh, um, available um, supporting um, instruments for for municipality, especially for um, calculating, but also reporting and bench learning. Um, the first tool available 
uh, is uh, a guideline for stakeholders' engagement. Uh, I think that all of you uh, is aware that um, Smart City is based on co-production, on networking. So it's very important to engage stakeholders, but um, it's important to say also that engagement processes must be managed. Uh, to achieve good results and um, uh, to achieve the targets you have in mind, you should have clear rules, dedicated resources, and uh, realistic expectations from both sides. Uh, so this tool is a guideline for people involved in energy and climate planning or management, and uh, it could be a useful resource for a wider environmental community. It's aimed at supporting the working teams and leaders in engagement, uh, in engaging uh, stakeholders, because energy, climate, and um, smart issues are cross-cutting subjects. So you have environmental, but also economic, social, political impact. And so an effective and successful approach ought to be transdisciplinary, involving all interested departments and sectors, starting from the internal structure of the public body, as the example of Milan before. So we would like to transfer uh, our knowledge and good practice and lesson learned together with practical, let's say, tips and tricks that can be used by further municipalities in this fundamental but uh, also very difficult process of um, engagement. Uh, those guidelines will be available very soon on, on the project uh, website. This is an example of different levels and options of public involvement in the planning and decision-making process. You have the simple information, uh, the base, the communication process. Then you have uh, the consultation in long-term processes or the cooperation on specific, very specific projects and um, the full engagement in the, in the planning. Uh, process. Uh, there are also um, illustrated uh, different uh, methodologies you can use for stakeholders and for each methodology it is suggested in which, in which case it's better to, um, to use it. I would like now to uh, illustrate you a practical example uh, which is reported also in the Smart City Guidance Package. It's the municipality of Florence, uh, which is involved in both our European projects and we have been supporting since 2010. It's a city which uh, step by step has become a smart city, starting from um, the covenantal mayors and now rolling out solution tested at pilot level to the whole metropolitan level, so also outside the city. As you can see um, from the list of their commitments, uh, sustainability in Florence uh, is, uh, as they say, is a never-ending story. So it's really a long, uh, a long path. Um, we have developed uh, a smart city plan based on the CEAP uh, submitted um, to the Covenant of Mayors. The difference is that the smart city plan has a wider scope, as you can see from the sectors uh, included, and uh, it has been developed with uh, uh, a very um, uh, deep uh, participatory approach, um, implementing system thinking methodologies and um, listening marathons and uh, public consultation. Everything started from a co-produced vision and uh, agreed ambitious measures in, uh, in different fields. After this plan, the city has been granted with uh, uh, an SCC-1 project, uh, Replicate, uh, together with San Sebastian and, and Bristol, and they have tested smart measures 
in a district uh, to uh, develop then from the lesson learned a rollout plan. Just to give you an idea of the actions in place in the single district of, of Lawrence, uh, they are similar to those implemented by, by Milan. We start from mobility, for example, which uh, was the most impacting sector in a city of Florence, which counts about 10 million tourists each year. And uh, beside the actions in place on public transport, like the new tram lines, electric buses, and so on, in the project, they developed a, a e taxi fleet, electric taxi fleet of about 100 uh, e cars. And they have a dedicated fast recharge uh, infrastructure and uh, an app to book the recharge at the columns. Then we have a, a public infrastructure for private, for private cars. Um, they have now about 200 uh, recharging stations all around uh, the city. And they deployed also services for vulnerable uh, people. Talking about buildings, um, they decided to work on socializing, also to target uh, the energy poverty issue. Uh, there's the retrofitting of uh, 300 flats, and also a very interesting micro district heating system which is connected to a big solar plant and uh, a seasonal thermal storage uh, built underground. That is the first example uh, in Italy. There are also some other measures um, to target the energy efficiency issue. For example, there are uh, an app and uh, smart info devices for citizens to monitor consumption, and to try to raise awareness and change their behaviors. And then, of course, being a, a smart city project, there's also um, a big implementation about ICT. Uh, for example, there's the IoT technology uh, that have been tested on smart waste systems, smart beans. Uh, there are also smart benches for citizens set in the parks, giving information and gathering data, uh, and also a smart watering system for green areas and parks in the city to save energy and water. But regarding ICT, the biggest um, action is the smart city control room that is gathering data from all public services and uh, also, um, uh, for example, um, energy providers and uh, um, um, other services uh, in the city because um, they have signed an agreement which is called Digital Manifesto uh, to provide data to the municipality to manage better and better the territory. This is uh, and uh, and also I was uh, forgetting about um, smart lighting that is more or less um, very common in this smart city project, which is linked to energy efficiency, but uh, also adding on the lighting infrastructure, uh, other services like uh, Wi-Fi sensors, video surveillance, and so on. So plenty of things in a single district. Uh, what we have learned from this uh, experience, let's say that after those years of uh, cooperation, it resulted clear that the smart city is uh, rather a liquid concept. It's not rigid. There's not a, a single definition. Uh, and it's not linked to the use of technologies. It's more related to a continuous process or an approach which is embedded into the municipal organization, which has to respond to new challenges for its citizens' well-being and also for its own resilience. So 
behind innovative technologies that are evolving faster and faster. And for example, in a few years, they can also become cheaper, changing completely uh, their actual business models. Uh, the supporting factors we called enablers in the first column on the left um, resulted the smart uh, vision with clear targets that must be set by policy, the municipal internal organization because the usual structure should be adapted to new challenges and to manage the integrated vision, the local legal framework can influence the diffusion of smart services uh, through regularity tools, and also uh, the externalities. Let's uh, illustrate you what I mean by externalities. Uh, how should a city uh, prioritize projects uh, in its plans? Uh, it's not behaving like a market uh, following uh, an integrated and wider um, concept, a city should take into account um, a lot of different aspects uh, from economy to social environment, and they are defining their smart priorities, counting all those things together. So the social and environmental impacts as well uh, the possible indirect externalities should play a role in the business model of the actions and in the decision-making uh, process. This was one of uh, the main results of the co-creation approach we had. In this last slide, I have collected all the links where you can find uh, projects and materials I have described. And I would like also to invite you in, in Brussels, where uh, on the 18th or 19th of February will take place the COM, the Covenant Investment Forum, and we will um, illustrate our projects and, uh, and our goals, and a lot of cities uh, will be attending. So thanks a lot, and I'm waiting for your questions. Thanks a lot to you, Chiara, for your very clear and detailed presentation. And I think it's very it was very useful the last slide with the links, so the participants can download the materials. Um, we have five minutes, so uh, if there are any questions, you can write them in the question window. Also for Antonio, who is still there, as I can see. Um, in the meantime, I would just like to ask you um, something about, uh, you, you mentioned the, the business models in your last slides, uh, but the sources of funding, I mean, uh, especially about the EU fundings, can you just mention maybe quickly uh, some of the platform that the EU uh, has for funding the, the local authorities in their path through sustainability? Thank you. Oh, um, we have found out that uh, there are a lot of different sources uh, for funding uh, smart city projects, uh, starting from EU funding. For example, we had the H2020 program that now will be released uh, for 2030 with new features. And then we have the EBRD um, uh, financing and a lot of uh, different financing sources also uh, at national level. What has to be taken into account that um, it is a multidisciplinary sector. So uh, don't look only at the uh, funds of energy efficiency, because for example, you can find supporting uh, incentives uh, about social, and you can put energy poverty in there, or about um, education and training and uh, other things. So there are a lot of uh, different opportunities for public funding. But let me say that uh, business models in this case are very complex 
and shouldn't be based only on public funding. There should be also a private part. And there are also some innovative schemes like green bonds uh, or um, things like that that could support uh, green, uh, green activities. Another suggestion I could um, I could give you is to uh, pack uh, projects together, trying to um, uh, have the best result for your city and having uh, an attractive business model for for the market. Thanks a lot, Chiara. Uh... I don't see more questions, so uh, let's say thank you for now. Thanks to Antonio once again, also for staying with us until now. Uh, I remember to the participants that uh, all the uh, presentations of today will be available on kyotoclub.org, our website, and in the few days next week, probably also the recorded videos of the webinars.